Hello and welcome back to the third and last part in my series on building Jimi Hendrix Harley Benton guitar. And today we are gonna assemble the guitar. We're gonna put the neck on, we're gonna put the electronics in and the bridge and hardtail and all those parts. We're gonna do a little bit of setup, but most of it is in the neck and we've already finished the neck. But anyway, first, before any of that, we are gonna have a reveal or something, I don't know. I have the body here and I'm gonna show it to you. This is what it looks like. Dun 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 da -da! As you maybe know, this is Jimi Hendrix inspired. I've just changed some things up a little bit because I don't actually want a Jimi Hendrix Stratocaster exact copy. I would either want his original guitar that he actually played or something that is inspired. And since I can't have his original guitar, which would have been awesome, uh, I've done some changes. I don't know if you can see this, but the red is actually a transparent red and the white is a transparent white. It doesn't show up that neatly on the camera and this body doesn't have that nice of a grain to it. So it's sort of a hit and miss, I suppose. I did it as a cool sort of nod to his guitar, but as a sort of a little bit of a difference. And I also, instead of having a drawing of a Rose made a little photo transfer, which I hope you can see. The only thing I've done to this body that I've not filmed is that I've put shielding tape in the cavity. And it's super simple to do. You just cut out pieces of aluminum tape and you line the inside and you make it flush and you cut it to size, push it down into the cavity and make it look neat. And you have, like you can see on the body, a little bit of overhang, like I have right here, so that when the pickguard goes on, you get a connection between the pickguard tinfoil and the body tinfoil, so that things meet up, so that you can get a connection all around. There isn't that much more to it. You need to use a multimeter to make sure you have connection all around. Press it down in different places, and you hear a beep. And that's basically all there is to it. You have to obviously shield the entire cavity and the little plug-in cavity or jack. And now we are gonna put the pickguard in place and the neck in place and the bridge in place and sort of just get this guitar to where we can play it and do the setup and those things. So without talking too much more, because I always feel like I'm rambling too much and making these videos about 10 or 15 minutes longer than they need to be, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Anyway, let's get going. We have a lot to do. So, yeah. Whew! Okay, so here's the guitar body and I have my coffee and cookies. So, I am ready to start building the guitar now. Here's the pickguard. I like to start with the pickguard because the body and all the parts on it are very easy to control when it's just this tiny little piece of it. Once you get, you know, a neck on it and things, it starts to become a little bit clumsy. So we're just going to get these things going first. So I'll put picker down here and I'll take this little part here, the little connector that lets you not solder. And I'm just going to cut that off because we're never going to use it. And I'll pull the ground wire that is going to go to the clock away and I'll start twisting these two wires together just so that they are out of the way for now. And when we've twisted them like this I'm just going to take a little bit of masking tape and it doesn't have to be much at all. I'm just going to take it and pull these together and secure them together with a little bit of map. And it's just so that they don't fray out from each other and get loose. I want to put the pick guard to the side like this the body and I want to pull this wire down into that hole and I want to put this two strings through the little hole on the side so that we can later put the pick guard down like this and screw everything in down into its right place and things like that but first we need to we need to put this on it's the soldering iron I use and we're gonna use it so we need to start it up right now like so okay so, I have the pickguard here, I'll flip it over and I'll just add a tiny little 
ground wire. It doesn't have to be super long, but somewhere around this uh, length. And we're just gonna put a little bit of solder on our, our soldering iron, and we're just gonna attach it to somewhere where a bunch of other ground connections are. Like so, and then we're just gonna flip it over like this and see sort of where this could be and move it to the side. I hope you can see what I'm doing. No, you can't. I'll flip it over to the other side. Um, I'll flip it over like this, maybe. There it is. A little bit confusing with all the ground wires everywhere. Now, this is already pre-tinned, and now I can hold it in place up to like a place like that. And I'm gonna take a little, a little nail. This is one of those that you use when you make furniture. They're not hard at all to find. And I'm just gonna poke it into the wood and take a hammer and basically use it to pinch the ground wire that we just attached into the wood. And after I've pushed this in and I've made sure it has a nice connection, I'm gonna take my molder meter, I'm gonna put it to continuity just like always, and I'm just gonna see if I get a connection to it and to the ground wire. And as you hopefully can hear, everything is connected. Now, just to be on the safe side, I am gonna melt a tiny bit of solder into where the nail and the wire is being pinched towards the shielding tape, just to melt all of those three points together. Something like that. Now, because it's kind of hard to measure out exactly the distance between things and if anything is gonna be touching and everything is kind of confusing, and the little nail is in this cavity right here. I'm gonna take some the electrical tape. I don't wanna create a, a ground circle where everything is weird. So I'm taking this tape and I'm just putting a piece of it down over where that is because I don't want to accidentally bump up against the back of the pot. That might become an issue. It's not certain that it will, but if we put a little bit of the tape there, we'll stay on the safe side. I would also do this in places like the cavities here, if I thought the back of the pots would hit up against it, but I'm pretty sure these are on that shallow. I don't think we have to worry about that. So now I can just feed the wires through these holes. The ground wires go through this hole here so that they can go to the jack, and this ground wire here goes through the little hole that is in the body, and I just have to try to match up the pick card with the body so that it will lie flush. And there's always something that is, you know, lying a little bit weird. And so you might have to stick your fingers in like this to try to find the right way for it to fall into place. Okay, so after the pick card is in its place, you can start screwing in the screws and you just take one screw at the time. Keep in mind two things though. First thing is you can't rely on these holes being in the right place. Most of these were not and most likely you're gonna have the same experience as I did, but that's okay. You you can just plug them up and redrill them, but you should probably test things and make sure things line up nicely. And second of all, if you are unsure about the work you've done on these pickups and the rewiring we did, and you haven't tested them to see if things works the way they're supposed to, then, you know, maybe only put in like two or maybe four screws or something, like one in each corner. Just because, you know, it's gonna be easier to uh, take those screws out if there are only four of them, basically. So now we can flip this over and around like this. And I'm gonna put something on this side just to hold this up a little bit at an angle so I can see it. From the back here, we have the claw, the ground wire to the, to the claw. And I was gonna show you how I connect it. But first we have to sort of estimate how much the wire we're gonna need. Put it through the little hole there. If you have a little hole there, you can see what I mean. Little hole, you can poke it through like that. And I, I think the claw will sit somewhere around here. So it will bend back like that. And we'll give ourselves a little bit extra there. We'll take a knife and we can cut it off. There is no real reason in having longer ground connections than what is necessary. It will only potentially introduce noise, which is what we don't want. And so now I'm just gonna pre-tin this wire here and I'm gonna move it up in to the side of the claw. You hold the claw like this and you 
take the wire and you basically push it in under the claw. I work the cable in under this claw here, bend it up a little bit with a knife just to make it easier for me. If you can see it or if my fingers are in the way, but I'm basically just crossing it under, trying to get it in there. This is not as hard to do when you don't film, so if it looks like I'm struggling, you're not going to struggle if you're not filming. And then just pinch it down a little bit, just to get a solid connection but also to hold the wire in place so it doesn't move you don't want to you don't want to break it bend it in have a little bit of slack and then we're just gonna go from the back and we're just gonna hold i don't know if you can see the little wire there we're just gonna hold the soldering iron in place and flood in some solder into it and because if you remember from the video where we fixed the hardware if you remember, we scuffed it up so it will have a nice solid connection. Something like that. Now we can just push the wire back in like this and move this across like that. And now we can take our screws and we can just line them up with the holes and put them in. And there is no real sense in tightening these down right now. We're just gonna put them in with our fingers so that they line up with the hole and that everything looks sort of okay and take our screwdriver and just put them in a little bit so that they don't fall out when we flip the guitar over something like that we're gonna leave it for now so we open the bag and we take out the plate or and the jack and we're just gonna attach these so let's zoom in there so let's start off by just looking at the jack here now if you remember i told you you could just cut these wires off and you would see where they fit and if you did you can just attach them, you don't really need to go overboard. But I want to just explain that the inner circle here, that you can see in metal, that's where the sleeve, the long part of cable, will touch up. That's the ground. You basically just need to know that, because if that's the ground, then the opposite one, because there are just two connections, if one is ground, the other must be the lead, right? And we have them here. And most of the time, not always, but most of the time, ground will be a black wire. So we put this to the side here and we can pull these over here and we can see because I like to be able to put my jack to the side. I always want the cables as short as possible, but I also like them to be, you know, long enough for me to be able to work. You could make it so that this sits here and you solder them in place here by sneaking in here and doing it very tightly. But I like to be able to just move this to the side. So we're going to cut these cables off somewhere around here like that. And then we're gonna hold them back like this and we're just gonna strip back the plastic cover and then we're gonna pre-tin them and i'm just gonna twist them around a little bit more just because i can like this and now i'm gonna just on solder this little cable here and put on some solder on my soldering iron and reattach the wires back where they came from and my hand is in the way so you can't see what i did uh, hopefully you'll see it better on this one Damn, it's hard. I need to get smaller hands. Heat it up, pull it out, take the black wire, which I hope you can see that I have here. Add a little bit more solder, hold them in place, just super fiddly. I hope you can see what I'm doing. No, you can't, damn it. And now they are connected. And now we can just take this, push it in to the cavity and line it up, something like that. Now we can just screw them in place. Okay, so we put the trim in so, and we take the first screw up here and we put it in place and we start screwing it down just like so just enough for it to sort of be in place and then we take the last one and we screw that one down and just screw it down a little bit and then we look from top and the holes are somewhat aligned but not perfect so if Mine are off by very little, so I think I'm going to be okay. But if yours are more out of whack, you have to basically just fill them up. And you can use this as a gauge for where you have to put in the new uh, holes. Okay, so you put in the screws and you press it with one hand flat against the body. And then you tighten the screws until the underside of the screw 
the hat here, sort of, you say so, the underside where it bends up like this. You tighten them until that is touching, but it's not enough to force the trem into bending forward. So, as you hopefully can see, they are all starting to touch this, but they are not forcing the trem forward. So it lies flat against the body. Okay, so now we're just gonna put these in. And I take the first one and I pull it in there. And you should be able to just tuck them in like that. And I like to put them in like this for an even spring sort of tension. But this trim that you get with this is super thin, it's not a very high quality, and I know some of you are gonna say you can use it, and the thing is, maybe you can get it to a place where someone who is a beginner that isn't that used to using a trem is okay with it, but I think we should try to build this guitar as nice as possible. So, we're gonna take these two springs out, and we're gonna move them over one from the middle to the outer one, so that we get a more even tension like this. I feel like this is a better tension for when you're not gonna use the trem. So now we can move this trem back to where the place this trem is sort of tight. We want to see these springs flex because right now you could pull them out with your hand because they're not very tight. So we pull the strings back until they're really taut. Then we take a couple of measurements that we need to take. Well, one is you need to measure how big the cavity is in this way. And the next one is you have to measure the back of the trem to the wall of the cavity, like so. And then the measurement down into the cavity, up to the wall. And you cut out a piece of wood that fits in there. Make it a little bit shorter so it doesn't go all the way up to the edge. And then we can press that in here. You might need to use a hammer and just tap it in place. And it sounds like I'm hitting it a lot harder, but that's because there is a bunch of springs on the trem and on the backside. So... Something like that. Now it's flush and nice, and we can pull the spring back a little bit. And the reason why we pull the springs back a little bit is just because we don't want the springs to be under that much tension for that long. That's not what they're supposed to be like when you're using a tram. They're not actually supposed to always be under tension. And I've said this before in other videos, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much. Let's move on to the next part. But just know it's a good idea to have them a little bit under tension, but not too much. Like you're supposed to be able to press them down something like this. Okay, so it's time for the tuners. Just put the tuners in like this and finger tighten the washers on the other side. That lets you move them like this without too much issue. Now, line them up with the hole where the little screw is going to go and put a metal ruler or something that you know is straight on the back like this and see if it lines up. If it doesn't and it looks all weird and wonky, the holes need to be plugged with a little wooden dowel you can take like a toothpick or something and some wood glue and then you need to just line them up put a metal ruler like this on the back and you need to make a little mark with an awl you just take it like this and just stab it and then take them off drill the holes make them maybe five mil or something then this is about 13 mil thick so if you go five mil that will be good enough and then you just line them up again put them in place and screw them in. And then you'll be where I am now. So now I can just take those tiny little screws, screw them in, and then I can tighten these down real hard. So it's time to attach the string trees. And if you look real close at them, one of them is taller than the other one. And it goes in here. And it's just because the angle of the strings right there is gonna be uh, steeper. So they need more space to move in. And we're just gonna screw these in, but we're not gonna screw them all the way down. Because the thing is, sometimes you can feel like the strings are being pulled harder. And the way you fix that is by adjusting the string trees so that they don't pull too much. So we're just putting them in and it's kind of loosely. They're just in there enough so that they won't accidentally come out. But we can adjust them to pull at the string in relation to the ones that are not being pulled so that everything feels nice. We'll do that later when we actually put strings on. Ah. 
I'm just gonna stretch the strings with my string stretcher and I'm gonna retune the guitar and do that a couple of times and then we'll be back tomorrow when everything is finished because it's getting pretty late now. So I'll see you soon. Okay, so I'm back the next morning and I've been able to play the guitar during the evening and stretch strings out and also get a sort of feeling for what I need to do for the setup. And here's the guitar as you might remember from just a couple of seconds ago for you. Okay, so I have the strings pulled to the side and I have my nut here. And here I have a pen, which I hope you can see. There it is. Here I have a pen that I have split down the middle. I've also put a piece of masking tape on it just so I don't smudge up everything with lead. And now I can just put this on top of the frets like this and move it up to the nut and just let it ride along like this. And where that line, that's how deep I can make the grooves for the strings so that they won't buzz out on the first fret, but also won't uh, be hard to press down. So I'm gonna just deepen these grooves a little bit so that they are just over this line. And on the camera, it sort of looks like they're already there, but in reality here where I sit, I can see that I can take away a little bit to just make the guitar a little bit nicer. And that's what this whole series is about. It's about the small things you have to do to think, make things a little bit better. And if you have perfectly cut slots in your nut, you will definitely feel a difference. Even if you've only taken away one tenth of a mil or something like that or half a mil. You know, it's a very small amount. You might think it doesn't matter. But I promise you when you play the guitar you will feel a difference. So I'm just going to cut these real quick and I'll be back and uh, we'll look at the next part. Okay, so I've fixed the nut and it's looking pretty good and now I've just adjusted the neck with my notch thread edge and a little allen wrench to make everything straight and nice and I am just gonna have a tiny bit, just a little, 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 little bit of relief in the neck. So just a little tiny up bow. And so remember, righty tidy, lefty loosey. Just gonna loosen the trust rod ever so slightly. I'm gonna remove this. And there it goes. Just a tiny little crank like that. And we'll check it. And just a little bit more. Something like that. It's just a tiny bit. It's like you'll get a light coming from this side and it will just barely shine through. Tiny little bit. Let's move on to the next part. So here we have the bridge and we're just gonna adjust these. And we're gonna start off by looking at fingerboard and see how much we can get these down. So I'm just putting these in here and I'm just turning them about maybe one whole turn each and I'm looking at it and I'm just gonna go around taking all of these down like this just giving them one turn around. So I put it in, it's facing right here I turn it around back there and I go to the next saddle and I'm just gonna do this and we'll just try to get a general height for all of them and since mine are very high up, I'm just trying to get them a little bit lower. Okay, so now I've gotten them down to a height that I think is sort of nice. I think I want to take them down a little bit more. But just to show you what I'm doing, is I'm playing all the notes down the neck. Like every note like this. and so on. Obviously not that fast. Really listening to them, making sure they're not buzzing or anything like that. And then I'm just lowering it and lowering it. You'll get to the point where the strings are lying on the frets and when that's happening, you can't really play the guitar. So obviously you can't have that low of an action, but you can get a really, really low action. I'm at about a little under two mil, which is perfectly fine. I feel like that's that's okay, but now I want to focus a little bit more on the saddles. And you can take your sanding block, that is the same radius as the fretboard. And you can hold it up like this, and you can see what sort of curvature you have. Because you kind of want to match the curvature. And I can see that my curvature is a little bit flat in the middle. 
which means that I either have to take the outer ones down a little bit more or raise the one in the middle. And since, because the string's in the middle, the, the G and B, no, the G and, and D string will be even lower now than the other ones, that means that maybe I should take down the ones on the outside to lower the action even more. Or possibly the opposite and raise the ones in the middle. I think I'm gonna do some in-between thing where I raise these a little bit and I lower the other ones a little bit. And the reason why I'm thinking of doing it that way is just because I'm kind of happy with the action the way it is right now. And I feel like I don't really want to change it that much. I also, you sort of have to have the action somewhat set up to how hard you play. And since I'm the kind of player that will play really softly and go up to something really hard, like... And the guitar is obviously not tuned correctly right now, so I know that. I hope you realize that I know that. So uh, for me, a uh, height that is somewhere in between that allows me both to play really hard and really soft is necessary. But if you're one of those guitarists that only plays really light, then you can set up your action for that in mind. Because you have to think about how big of a movement the string will have. If you're playing really light, you might have just a tiny, tiny little bit. But if you play really, really hard, the string might go all over the place. And obviously you will have a kind of fret out or bus sound if you play really high, really hard on strings that are really low. So I'm just gonna adjust this a little bit and I'm gonna match it up to this and I'll be back real soon. Okay, so the next step after the string height is the way you want it to be. And just to clarify, just because someone is probably gonna understand, I like to level my frets to the point where I feel like if I have a mill of string height from the frets, that's a good starting point to work on. It's not that I want that height, it's just where I feel like if you have that as a standard, then most other standards anyone else has will work on that because you can always get higher and most people want higher than one mil. Anyway, next step is adjusting these for intonation. And what you do is you take one string and I'm not gonna do it on camera because it's gonna take too much time because you have to go back and forth a lot. You just take one string, you play it, you tune it, and then you hold it down on the 12th fret and you see how much you have to move this and you just adjust. And every time you play it open after moving this, it will be detuned, so you'll have to tune it again. So I'm gonna go and do that now, real quick. Um, well, for you, it's gonna be real quick. See ya. So here's the guitar, it's finished now. I just wanna point out a thing before we get to what it sounds like. The bridge needs to come forward a little bit. The holes were not drilled in the right place, so the bridge can't really be intonated perfectly. I'm off a little bit. Hopefully you still get sort of an idea of how it sounds, but mainly the focus here is on making the guitar play and feel good. And I can't really show you that. But anyway, so as hopefully you can hear that the amp is on right now. The amp is on and there is not a lot of background noise. If I put my finger on the metal parts, we don't get any weird buzzings or weird noise sounds. So the grounding works really nice. Now keep in mind that you can't really trust the sound you hear on any YouTube videos. There's a lot of thing going on, but the way I'm recording is straight into the camera with a microphone on top. You can see a little bit of it here. So just so you know, don't, don't fully trust it. But anyway, so here's the guitar. Anyway, on this is what it sounds like clean. Okay, so now we're gonna plug this pedal in that I just received a week or so ago and I'm gonna rehouse it so there's gonna be a fun video about that because I think I have a fun idea. But anyway, our distorted sound is gonna be through this and the reason why is because I'm using a Fender Practice amp, the kind of thing you get when you start playing guitar. And I think most of you, if you're beginners or if you're playing this sort of, you know, beginner guitars, you would probably also have maybe a Behringer pedal. And since this is my newest Behringer pedal. I'm gonna plug that in and let this be the distortion. So we're gonna play some fuss, which I also think will fit together with this guitar. So let's plug this in and see what it sounds like. <laughs> 
something fun or interesting talk to me in the comments below if you have any questions of anything or if you just want to tell me you know how much you like the guitar I appreciate the nice comments and some of the troll comments are kind of funny but anyway stay awesome and cool and until next time go and build an awesome amazing guitar that inspires you to make a bunch of cool music okay awesome bye bye